Hi all, my name is Mess Bartenkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I am also here with my lovely daughter and today we're taking a look at a defective CCD camera that I got with my stereo microscope. So let's uh, check out the camera here. It is a Kappa CF15 which is a composite output camera and we will yeah just tear it down and see what's inside the huge metal box here and it also has its own little power supply from 230 volt AC to what you normally see these CCD cameras, analog cameras that they use some 8 to 30 volt DC. So let's get it taken apart. While April takes the power supply apart we can take a look at the camera itself. Aluminum seems to be in uh, many parts that seems like one whole part and then some kind of lid here and then the ends. We have a C-mount lens mount here. We can see the CCD processor in here, which is a charge coupled device. It's a kind of analog sensor that is the predecessor of the CMOS sensor that we know from modern cameras today. We will take a closer look at that later. At the back we have a B and C plug for the composite video out. It uses the 75 ohm coaxial cable for the video output. And the power connector here is actually a very high quality LIMO connector. Kind of special. Uh, also gold plated, very nice. Has a uh, global shutter on off, white control and auto manual control which is kind of uh, funny because there is no external control to hook up to it, to it anywhere. So I'm, uh, I'm assuming that's white control, auto manual, and this is manual. All right, we have the power supply taken apart and it seems that the control that it's speaking of could be that BNC plug here. Simply just two wires going into this bundle, which is just soldered up without any kind of isolation on. Okay, that's pretty weird. I hope this is uh, some uh, nut job. Or it seems to... Ah! That used to be mounted in this. That has been pulled out because there is not enough cable support there. That's pretty bad. But the power supply itself here, that is pretty basic. Seems we have a bridge rect rectifier over here. We have some input capacitors. At least we seem to have a isolation transformer. A large DC bulk capacitance here. A single switch mode power supply there with a thermistor on to sense the temperature of it. So overall it does have some nice uh, safety features. I guess that is the fuse over here. Yep. So we both have some temperature sensing. We have a fuse. We have some noise decoupling. We have isolation transformer. A good old school design with a variable output. Very nice. So let's get that to the side and take a look at the camera itself. Plastic coated on the inside. It's not like it's even near these PCBs, but I guess they are better safe than sorry. So let's see how much this is going to fall apart. Wow, some nice small hack jobs there. Red green wire added, a small resistor sitting there, crammed in between the tracks have some more shielding down here at the composite encoding part. Seems we have some headers for the other PCBs here. Quite a packed design, I must say. This is just resistors and capacitors everywhere. Whoa, look at that. that that's amazing. That's like extremely packed. It's not just with a motherboard with some vertical Boards, it also has horizontal boards the other way again. This is crazy. Look at that star point grounding there. Very nice. So there's no doubt that this is a 
high quality design and there has really been put some effort into doing this. You can see we have all the trim parts, the small dip switches available to adjust it and set it up. What an amazing design. That is seriously a small backbone board here where we have all the slot cards sitting in here. All made differently so you cannot misplace a card. And it seems that the middle card we have here, that could very well be a power supply as we have a lot of electrolytic capacitors sitting there. And in between all the cards, we have these small copper plate isolated cards, simply for a nice reduction between the cards, so you don't get any unwanted crosstalk. But uh, I did expect that these would actually be grounded, but they are not. And we actually have one that was sitting behind the CCD itself. You can see it has been a little hot there. But over here we have the line scanning part that connects to the CCD itself. So let's just get a good look at that right away. A very beautiful gold plated chip here. We will get a closer look at that. Oh, that seems to be some kind of plastic there. has really been packaged with all kinds of insulating, isolating material here and there. Okay, that's actually stuck. Seems like it was put in there before it was soldered in. We have the UV filter that was sitting in front of the CCD sensor. As this is a European product, I expect it to be a PAL encoding card that we have here. And the last part here seems for sure to be a CPU card. We have a MN1552CVY CPU sitting there. And then, of course, some more shielded electronics. A lot of shielding going on in this unit. So clearly it must have had noise issues when making it so compact with all these kinds of shield plates and such sitting all around. Here we are staring down my microscope to see right into the CCD sensor. Now it is a little slanted to avoid too much direct light down on the glass surface of it. So let's try to zoom in a bit more. Now we can see the individual bonding wires. There is a total of 10 on each side of the whole array here. And we can actually see the single charge cells or the small capacitors that make up the CCD. And as I mentioned earlier, the CCD is a charged coupled device, which means that when the data is read out of this unit, the IC simply reads a line at a time and the capacitor can handle over its charge to the next in line. And by that it can actually read out a line of the picture by each of these cell delivering its charge to the neighbor. And then by scanning the whole array, the analog processor can then get a line of the image. The main CPU, the MN1552, is a Panasonic CMOS 4-bit single chip microcomputer. It runs at a clock frequency at 20 kilohertz and it has 4 kilobytes of ROM and 256 words of RAM. So that's it. It's a incredible old microcontroller or as it's called here a single chip computer. Very interesting uh, little board that it actually has a, uh, a single computer at that time this was built. The analog processor board here which took in the array or the CCD processor via this flat cable. Seems to have a single processing CPU here, which is a Motorola MN1552 
51007, which unfortunately is unable to be locked up, but it seems to be at least temperature compensated as we have this sitting across it. Now at the input we have a 5000 50,003, which is a CMOS gate array, so that's a buffer from the input from the CCD sensor. And over here we have a small power supply that was solely made for the CCD chip. On the PAL encoding board, we can see we have some capacitors, but other than that, it's pretty much passive components and a few ICs, uh, logic ICs. 74 HC series, so actually not much to notice on this board. And on the back side, we probably have all the PAL chips sitting here. Now this is what I thought would have been a power supply board. Um, I have not come to any other thoughts as of now, as we seem to have some AN3361 ICs and there's a couple of them, so yeah, that remains a power supply in my world. The small backplane board here, which actually has a pretty interesting design, because it actually takes all the data from the board here and has all the outputs to the real world. And it all sits with small plugs here. Very neat, neatly put in place with different colored plugs. There's actually no way you can mount this wrong. It's actually fun to see that it has, has mounted wires into these. So I guess this is multi-purpose or maybe it's made so you cannot plug it in wrong. And it does seem to have some kind of SPI or pro programming port. Four pins, three of them connected, and a ground. That's pretty interesting. But other than that, it seems to be mostly B power supply that sits here at the end of the board. I hope you enjoyed the teardown of this Kappa CF15 CCD camera. It was a very well-engineered product. I'm really surprised that it was so packed with electronics as we saw here. So thank you for watching and until next time, see ya.